Khajiit, Fluff and Boots, Panthers, Jaguars, Lions, Tigers, Bears. No, that's the wrong video. Felis Catus, Thundercats, Mr. Whiskers, Mithra, Cat Sith, Table. Let's talk about Tabaxi. Whether you want your next character to excel at knocking things off of tables, asking for cheeseburgers, or finally dealing with that long-standing skooma addiction that you've been telling yourself isn't a problem, it might be time to play a tabaxi. Tabaxis. Tabaxco. Tabac, tabac, tabaxis. Tabaxis. Tabaxis? Tabaxis trend all the way back to the Fiend Folio from 1981. And that is an old fluffer butt. Uh, there were originally only two types of tabaxic taxicatis. Uh, those being from the leopard variety, calling themselves tabaxi, and the panther variety, going by the name of tabashi. And that was for almost 30 years. Now they're basically giant house cats that are scared of water and travel around with fidget spinners made out of yarn. As for the name, the only thing I can think of is from where the term tabby came from, because they're tabby -ixes. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. If you guys figure it out, drop it in the comments. So otherwise, it's got a French root, I guess. Something with the fur. And boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Onward! I do think that the tabaxi are a very strong race. You just have to take it with a grain of salt. They, the, the were jaguars? Yep. Yeah, that's a word. The were jaguar and black panther toting days of these once villainous creatures are far behind us, and what we have now is a more domesticated, common addition to any adventuring party. Actually, now saying that out loud, is the black panther a were cat or a furry? I'm gonna have to look into that some more. On that note, is Batman a furry? Don't Google that. No, wait, I'm thinking of Man Bat. We're gonna go ahead and just keep moving along. A really cool addition to the adventuring party that is D&D. I've always been told that tabaxi are really good at only a few things, and I can see where people are coming from because they were originally monster races and the variety variety of cool aspects they have really come from variants of those traits. So all tabaxis are highly dexterous, uh, have excellent night vision in the form of dark vision, and have bonuses to stealth and perception. Did I mention that they get a charisma boost? Because my money is on is those big fuzzy ears of theirs, but it could also be the little adorable little jelly bean toes. But you really need to specify the feline heritage to really get down to the cool parts of these heavily homebrewed characters. In 5th edition, they also have access to the trait feline agility, which is basically just allowing them to double their movement speed for one round before resting. But honestly, I think that's a little odd, considering that in all the other monster manuals from Pathfinder to 3.5 into the Fiend Folio, they get things like pounce, rake, and grab. I know that these are monster-based abilities and traits, and I think they're a lot more in the spirit of what the Tabaxi are. They're hunters and assassins. They're creatures that hide in trees and silently move, waiting to pounce on their unwilling prey as they slowly walk from the bathroom to the bedroom, instilling fear and terror. Such as me. Is my cat the only one that does that? Yeah. No? Just just me? Okay, great. So while I appreciate that they get their claw attacks, which are natural slashing weapons, as well as their natural climb speed, which is about 20 feet, which is pretty great, it kind of feels like they're always going to be locked into being rogues or monks. So giving them this ability that rogues and monks naturally get just feels pointless. It gets a little repetitive. And don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of wiggle room for tabaxi warlocks. Warlops? What is a warlop? Warlocks worshipping their giant tabaxi lords. And that is a real thing. You can go ahead and look it up. The giant cat people. Talk to your DM about that one. That is canonical. <laughs> but I really think you could unlock some of the cooler monster feats by really diversifying the breed of your litter. Diversify the... Yeah, no, that, that's right. Doesn't sound right. Cheetah Tabaxi, for instance. Awesome. Keep the feline ability trait, but instead of it being just a one-time use before having to rest, you could go ahead and make it just like the Rogue Dash. Level gate it so that they get it at a specific point, and just like that, you have a character that's really, really good at running, and you don't have to be a rogue to achieve that. If you decided to go the Snow Leopard route, you would get more bonuses to stealth in cooler climates or in snowy areas, but I'd also give them a bonus to grabs with their claw attacks. Hell, throw a free grab in there. If you get both claw attacks off successfully, then you know, give them a grab. That's kind of how the rend mechanic works anyways, but it's generally reserved for creatures if you hit with both claws. Garfield's Whiskers. Rend is just a really cool move, and if you haven't played a character with rend or a rend type of attack, think about homebrewing a necklace of natural rend. Try that out. It's a lot of fun, especially as a DM, uh, seeing some of your players who are locked into natural attacks get these insane boosts of damage. And there's a lot of play in there that you can adjust and, and balance in your own games. Have you ever seen a tiger eat a pumpkin? Yeah. Didn't see that segue coming, did ya? Bite attacks, though. For a tiger tabaxi? Absolutely. Hell, if you want to do a Thundercat campaign, just roll a lino tabaxi, barbarian, and you're basically halfway there. Note to self, homebrew a sword of omen for next campaign. Should I make it sentient? Or just have it be really loud? 
There's a lot of really cool variety you can throw in there as well, just for fun, based around household cats. Uh, maybe a tuxedo tabaxi gets additional bonuses to charisma, or has a special feat to throw up hairballs in your party shoes at night. Yeah, that was a burn on you, cat. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Meh. Did I mention Mage Hand yet? I really like how much Frumpkin affects Caleb's spellcasting in Critical Role. I think Liam O'Brien does a really good job of making those two things like mesh really well together. If you build an arcane trickster tabaxi, shouldn't the Mage Hand have claws? I mean, I know the spell specifically says that it can't make attacks, but I'm just saying if it's got claws and it's invisible, meh, 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 mage claws? There's a lot of cool things you can do by thematically shaping spells. And I think this is a great opportunity to do that. Like that kind of racial based adaptation is really what I love about D&D. I think if you want to make a character based around your furry, whiskered friends, I say go for it. Talk to your DM about it. And hell, start by taking one of the billions of pictures you have of your cat on your phone, and bam, you're already like 80% done with the, the character art. Not to mention, if you play D&D at your house, you're already used to seeing your cat on the battlefield, eating goblin minis, or at least knocking your dice all over the place. Who knows, sometimes it might land on a 20. Remember to keep your cat on the table. Wait, no, that's not right, it's dice. Remember to keep your dice on the table, and your cat's on the floor. Thanks again for watching, and if you have a really cool tabaxi story, tabaxi story, I like Tabasco, a really cool Tabasco story. You know, what kind of eggs do you like? Salsa? Tabasco is a salsa. No, Tabasco is a flavoring. I don't know. It's a hot sauce. If you have a cool hot sauce story that you want to tell about your friends, what is my life right now? If you have a great story about a Tabaxi that you maybe liked or didn't like being in your party, uh, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, and as we are growing as a channel and growing as a community, you can check us out now on Patreon. We're opening up our Patreon page and allowing people to uh, get access to digital assets, digital tokens that I make of the, of the characters, as well as some of the artwork. And if you'd like to join our Discord server, that is also an option. We are trying to build a community where we can talk about art and D&D and kind of blending all that craziness together. I am having a great time talking to everybody in the community. So if you've already commented, awesome. Keep at it. Trying to get a hold of everybody as they go. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Keep your dice on the table. I already said that. Oh, well, you get it twice. Come here, cat. Yeah. Time for food.